Hello. It's a Hello. great pleasure to have you both here with us today. Thank you. Hold on. Hold he on. made me. He made you? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> uh, well, of course, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule, both of you, to come and join us here. Um, this is a, a big, big project, and I'm so grateful that you are in Zagreb. But before we talk about that, because I know you can't tell us much, <laughs> um, I would uh, really like to ask you, um, how did you get started in the, in the industry and what got you interested in the films? Um, now, many years later, you're one of the biggest producers with big, big names uh, of movies behind you. What, how did it all start? I guess growing up, you just love movies. And I was lucky enough to score an internship at a local at a newspaper, working for one of the big German film critics, which um, in return ultimately got me into the Munich Film School, where I met a crazy filmmaker, Roland Emmerich, and I still work with 37 years later. So I guess love in movies and right place, right time. Um, in, in the beginning, did you uh, have any role models uh, if, when you were looking at those films? Did you say, oh, I want to be like this or I want to make movies like this? So you were looking for your own inspiration. I guess early on there wasn't like today where you can look up everything on the internet and it's at your disposal. You, you read a couple magazines and then you're more influenced by the people that you meet, which until today is the Roland Emmerich I just mentioned, and Peter Jackson and Guillermo del Toro, who, who I was lucky enough to meet all of them before they had a name or were anything, where you just meet some driven people that are like Pied Pipers, like, come with me, we're making this movie, and and um, you get infected by it and by their enthusiasm. And So I guess those are still the role models today. Good ones, I got to say, good ones. Um, Independence Day, Greenland, Midway, some of your biggest movies uh, and projects. Um, but in your career so far, is there a project or just a moment that you are most proud of? It doesn't have to be these films. Maybe it's the fir first one you ever made. Who knows? Mm, it probably have to be Harold and Kuma, <laughs> which we all love the crazy script and... Everybody in town liked it, and we went to every studio. And for those of you who have not seen it, it's about an, an Indian and an Asian young man who want to decide, underdogs who decide to find the perfect hamburger. And uh, we were down to the last studio at, at Universal, and they told us, yeah, it's great, but it's an Indian guy and an Asian guy. It cannot be one white and one Hispanic. And we said, oh, bullshit, and we ran out of there only to get, oh my god, we probably killed the project. Ultimately got it together, but standing up for it and the integrity of the movie, which felt like a really stupid thing to do at that moment, but ultimately, and, and 20 years later, when, when people talk about this movie and as being one of the first that really gave diversity a voice and a young Indian guy and a young Asian guy in a major Hollywood movie, in hindsight, is probably one of my proudest moments. Great story. Um, when selecting new projects, what do you actually look for? Does it all start from the script, like most people say? Or does it start with an idea? Or how, well, let's say, one of your biggest projects, how did it start? Well, I'm specifically a line producer who works in an area of, I don't find the play or the script or the comic book and and turns it all the way through. I come in a little later in the process when they're actually ready to make the movie. So I typically get the call, hey, we have a little bit of interest from Kate Beckinsale, and we have this and this money, and where in the world would you take this to? We need to do this for about this kind of money that we can put together, where you help getting it over the finish line, find the country you go to, find the local service producer, set up the movie, see it through principal photography. So I'm less driven by definition by this is a fantastic script, we should make it. Uh, I come in when, when, it, when you actually have to make the movie. 
But you still have a possibility of picking and choosing. If you have three projects on the table, which one would you pick? Well, challenges. We all love, love challenges. Like yeah. when they say it can't be done and uh, within reason. And you, know, <laughs> you don't always set yourself up for failure. But the challenging ones and the one that take you to exotic places. And I specifically like visual effects planning and the whole... Like when, when, when I read a script, it's all kind of like gray ideas <laughs> and then eventually seeing spaceships and... And, 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 and characters come alive that, that you haven't really been able to visualize myself. That's an angle where I thrive. Um, let's move now to the film that you are actually here for in Zagreb and Croatia. Uh, what can you actually tell us about the project? Not much. They haven't announced it, properly announced it yet. Um, what we can tell is the title is Canary Black. Uh, it's directed by Pia Morel, who you guys know from Taken, Taxi, Transporter. And it's starring Kate Beckinsale. And it's like a female born supremacy, born a uh, Bond and um, action movie that you will have to forgive us in advance for blocking traffic in downtown Zagreb and causing all kind of mayhem around town. Uh, is there um, a, a key point or decision that actually made you come to Zagreb? Our script was written for Prague and um, this landed in my lap. It was like, hey Carson, we have this project for Prague. Their rebate just collapsed. And um, where would you take it to? So we ultimately, I did budgets for Greece, Turkey, Abu Dhabi, Malaysia, Thailand, Serbia, and Croatia. And for reasons of the similarity of look, that was really written as a character into the script and the rebate, and I was feeling very comfortable with um, the local setup and with um, Igor Nola's MP films. We are here now. Well, then we have to say a very big thank you to Igor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thanks to them. I who, didn't know about the script until they were approaching me. So. Yes, but because of your achievements so far and the good name that you have outside of Croatia, right? That's true. That's why you got the email. So we got to say thank you for everything you did so far. It, it was funny. Um, we have a mutual friend who, his name is Meta Tool, and we did with him uh, Hidman's Five Bodyguard. Yeah. So what we achieved with uh, Hidman's Five Bodyguard, uh, when Karsten called Matt, he told him immediately go to Zagreb, and he did put us on the phone, and, and we were already at that time a bit late with the prep, and uh, it's still a crazy time to prep this movie, because it's really for uh, for the money which we have I think we should have the triple of the money to achieve this but we are now trying to put things together in a different way uh, and to achieve to make it the work. whole script yes and it's thanks to the community they help us as well we cannot like Carson said we cannot tell too much Yes, it will be loud, it will be fast. It's not fast and furious, but it's... Uh, fast and loud. It's fast and loud, yes. <laughs> it's uh, born supremacy mixed with the James Bond, but it's not... The, it's the beauty of the city which we have in which we all live. So where we found the most perfect locations. Of course, yes, you can find them in Singapore, Malaysia, but there is a touch here which is unbelievable. So I think it's, that's why we, in the end, everyone chose that, uh, to be here in Zagreb. And this is actually a project that is going to be filmed completely in Zagreb, in let's say 95%. Yeah, we will, yeah 95% of it. Uh, we will just go for five days to Rovin, where we are going to do, and we cannot reveal which scenes. Of course not. But it will be, in the end, I think people will love it what we did. So, sorry to interject, but we're playing Zagreb for Zagreb. 
Yes. And this is the home our Kate Beckinsale has picked. And that's where she wants to live. And, and Rovine actually doubles for Tokyo. That's, 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 all, that's all we can say. I said too much already. <laughs> That's, a, that's very that. interesting, Rovin yeah, for uh, Tokyo. Wow, I can't yeah. wait to see how you made that happen. <laughs> um, but um, I must say that um, having a movie like that, filmed here for over 50 days, and making Zagreb, Zagreb as the main character, is something that never happened before, as long as I know. At yes, least not in the, in the recent history, all completely in Zagreb. You made Zagreb in Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, which was amazing. That was the first step. But it wasn't the full story. But, uh, but, I had, but uh, with this script, like Carson said, you know, um, we, we had a setup, you know, because we all know Prague and we are competing in Prague for so many years. Sometimes we are doubling, sometimes, you know, it's Zagreb. But uh, we want to bring a project of this size. so people can see what can be done. We all know that in Croatia you can double 18, 20 world countries. Yep. But the hardest is to double yourself. Mm. That's the hardest because it will be a lot of things to do and it's for the first time where uh, you know, the, the community will have to, in a way, interact with us because yes, we will block streets, we will do this, we will do that. It will be loud and everything. Uh, the, the whole film happens in a single night. Mm -hmm. That's why we have a lot of night shoots. And, and yes, we will be like almost 50% of our shooting days, we will be outside in, in the, the night. Street. So I'm uh, going to ask the media that is here to please ask everybody to <laughs> cooperate and not complain because projects like this don't come every day. Um, yeah, but I, I just want to say, like, I come, many years ago, you know, uh, Jackie Chan was here uh, uh, with a feature film which was shot completely in, uh, in Zagreb as well and then some other, other towns. Uh, it is the same type of action. So it will be, people would love to watch it. We will have, yes, we will have to stop you at certain distance because of the security and everything, but I hope you will love it. But I know that we will have the press all over us <laughs> every day, and it's, but uh, we will tell you as much as we can, and we will try that you come closer as much as we can. But sometimes it will not be possible not to reveal the main points of the story. Yep. Well, now we're going to finally have those images uh, from Zagreb like we have from New York or London or wherever when they close everything and you have 2,000 people around watching how they film. So we're going to get ready for, for, for those days. Yes. And um, definitely try and be at your service to make everything as smooth as possible um, and help you with the media if we can and help you with everything so that Mr. Carson comes back. Like we made Paul come back. Yes. Um, no, a huge thank you to um, in advance to the the city of Zagreb. Like people don't really understand what goes into to do a car chase through the city center of a metropolitan city and rerouting tram lines and trash trucks and security and safety and as a military style operation to block every single driveway and doorway because. A single dog running into the into into the street when cars barrel through there at high speeds yeah. is like obviously very dangerous and so on. The, the cooperation of the city to make this possible on a with a, with a positive attitude and the permitting process. Um, thank you in advance. Um, to go back to uh, numbers just quickly. Uh, we heard from uh, Tanya and Hafts how much money actually productions like this leave in certain countries and certain uh, cities. Uh, approximately, because you know your budget. Yeah. Um, how much money will Zagreb earn based on accommodation, permits, um, fees, things like that? So we can tell in the afternoon to the Zagreb Tourist Board 
how much money they're going to make and what they have to give back to us. Uh, it's, uh, I, I wouldn't put it in, in that way that where I say how much Zagreb earns because uh, uh, city of Zagreb, yes, they, they have their, um, uh, they charge you for the permits, they charge you for their services and everything and you pay that. And you cannot just, uh, it will be strange, you know, also for the press that they say, oh, now the city of Zagreb will earn so much. But we are all citizens of Zagreb, so we are paying taxes here. Uh, there are hotels, you pay taxes on hotels. Uh, you, pay, you pay for food, you pay for extras. Yeah. And in that, there is a lot of taxes. Yeah. Uh, Zagreb, as the main city, has the highest taxes. And of course, the, they are getting from their, their, their Into share. Into their budget, yeah. You know. mm -hmm. So the overall spend of the film in Zagreb will be around uh, 85 million kunas. Mm -hmm. So including all the salaries and everything. So if you calculate that, there is about 30% of that money is in taxes, personal taxes, income taxes and all of it. So yes, you can say that, that uh, there will be like 24 million kunas will be spent here and will go into the city Budget. But it, it's a law, so it's of course it's, it's very, not. It's, very, it's not like they're gonna. Uh, but the thing yeah. is, the thing is that you know, uh, you are, we are employing 380 people. Mm -hmm. We have uh, 1,200 extras. Uh, we are buying everything local. Yes. You know, we are renting everything local. So it's uh, everything stays here. Not to say that if you want to say about the tourist board, once when the film is out, and then you know about that film tourism. So there will be more and more people which want to come see where we filmed, yep. how did they film, how did they make that, that she is flying from roof to a roof over several skyscrapers in Zagreb. She is doing this, she is doing that. Mm -hmm. A lot of stunt scenes will be involved. So people are usually eager to see that. You know? Yeah, no, that's gonna be, the, it, it, you can't even put a price tag on that when no, the film can. actually comes there, out. There's another way of looking at this and like um, when, for example, the film rebate started in Louisiana or Montreal, I, I happen to be there where you oftentimes have to help politicians justify the rebate yeah. and analyze it. So the formula that typically gets used, every dollar spent in the jurisdiction conservatively multiplied by 3.6, optimistically like as much as six because that money goes into the economy which people take to restaurants, buy clothes, buy houses, buy it, it, it stimulates economy. It's not just money that goes yeah. there and sits there. It's like it has a, a multiplying factor. And um, and uh, again, conservatively, people use 3.6. Aggressively, they use six. times six. One to six. Uh, you mentioned 380 people um, in percentages, approximately. How many of those people are local, and how many are actually a crew that is coming with you? Almost 90%. More than that. We're bringing in 17 professionals, largely because they always travel with the director. His cameraman, his camera crew, his stunt crew. Mm -hmm. Everything else is local. So 17 of 380, what is that? 5%, 4.6, something like that. <laughs> That's amazing. Great. So it's uh, like uh, we, um, uh, key makeup is uh, creation. Costume uh, designer is creation. Supervising art director is creation. We have people in camera which are creation. So special effects are fully creation. Great. So, like entire cast, production team, production team, casting. Yeah. We have uh, we have so far we have 18 roles, uh, creation actors and actresses, in the film, uh, among which one young Croatian actress, I cannot tell you the name, uh, is, uh, she is number four in the film. Great. She has a very big role. Well, great uh, uh, future for the people that will definitely be a part of this project. Yes. And um, I have to say that always listening in these kind of um, conversations, we always talk about business, of course, which is the main point, but um, what do you guys do when you're not thinking about films? Does that moment even exist in your heads with all the projects? Like, how do you relax? 
uh, go to the coast for an ocean swim. Go to Ravine. <laughs> or Opatia or Zadara, anything you can get to for the weekend and, 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 and come back for Monday morning in the office. Plug out. Plug out? You never plug out, we know that. And uh, uh, <coughs> last question, what would you be if you didn't become producers? Oh boy. I know, save the last, you know, the hardest for the end. Probably rock and roll. <laughs> like. Dancing rock and roll or making rock and roll? Music? No, mu probably music, yeah. <laughs> In some shape or form. Yeah. I still think film. I was no, I said no. No, not producer, but okay, something in the film. Something in the film. Okay. Probably. Um, it's I, written somewhere. Are there maybe any questions from the audience? Anybody? No? Okay. Well, thank you very much You're then. Um, appreciate uh, your time in these crazy moments right before the shooting. And uh, you're going to see us running out of here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we hope to see you on the streets. Yes. All right. Very soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for having you're us welcome. today. Thank you.